Hello everyone, and welcome back to some Splatoon Deep Dives. A little bit ago, we got a boatload of new info about Splatoon 3 in the September Nintendo Direct. And oh boy, is this going to be wild. So, without further ado, let's dive right on into the analysis. Starting off with the gameplay showcases, we get a look at uh, a few of the new specials, the first of which appears to be a crab-like mech or rideable vehicle, um, which seems to be functioning similar to a like replacement for the baller. However, it shoots shots similar to the Rainmaker, but with much faster rate of fire, travel time, and explosion detonation time. The second of which we see is a shield generator of some kind. This generator uh, seems to be a stationary placeable item similar to things like the beacons or the uh, splash wall. In the case of this shield generator, it appears to create a radial bubble around wherever it is placed that blocks incoming attacks, whether it be bombs or um, main weapons. Similar to things like the splash wall or the shield around the Splatoon 1 and the Splatoon 2 spawn points. However, whether this is going to have some sort of HP bar to it or things like a timer has yet to be seen. We also get to see in this action sequence that Super Jumps are making a return, which was something that we weren't sure about given the, uh, the new spawn point mechanics. Um, we also see a glimpse of what appears to be a third special, which is some sort of grappler functioning similar to like a Spider-Man style grappling hook that you get to launch yourself to different platforms from place to place. This, to me, seems like it'd be very good on weapons that are either very long range, such as the, uh, the Charger variants, as a option of getting away from people. However, it can easily also be used, as you can see in the actual trailer, by short-range frontline weapons to be able to rapidly advance on backline positions. We also, in throughout this fight sequence, get to see a number of weapons are confirmed to be returning to the game, such as the Gluga's Undercover Umbrella, splash matic what looks to be like either the 32 or the 36 gal, although I imagine both of them are making a return, the Clash Blaster, Splat Roller, and a Charger that likely is either the Splat Charger variant of the game, but could also be some new Charger variant. All right, jumping in here also real quick. Um, so this is me from the future, as you can see, and the time down here in the corner uh, is much later than um, uh, when this came out. I'm editing this hopefully the day this is coming out, but because my um, editing software also lost the last fourth of the editing, it might be later because I have other things I need to do today. So I apologize if this is a little late, but they also released more information than they had put out when I had recorded most of the audio you are going to see. So I will periodically be cutting in here with uh, this, which will affect how things go, and I have some slightly different opinions on things now. But needless to say, first things first, where this is going in, we get um, a couple more pictures of the crab special. It is called the crab tank, so it is, it's just a crab tank. That's awesome. The Big Bubbler is what this one is called, which is the Shield Generator. Makes sense. Zipcaster is what this is called, the Spider-Man looking one. The Trizuka is what they've named this thing. I don't remember where they see it. I, see it. I briefly read through this at like 3 a.m. last night. Um, and the Killer Whale 5.1, which is what I'm most excited about because I love the Killer Whale as a special. Um, which appears to basically be um, basically Scorching Ray from the indie fifth edition but uh ink base i'm i'm pretty sure it also probably still cuts through the map but you don't actually get to aim it so it just kind of goes right moving on so. to world info in the same gameplay scene as before if you look closely to the stage that they're playing on in the later half of the video it looks very much to be museum the alfonzino from splatoon 1 which has some major implications this could mean stages from both Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2 will be making a return, something we are unsure of as of the last trailer. This could also very well mean that there is some sort of means of traversing between the Splatlands and back to Inkopolis. We also see some more areas on the Splatlands, revealing that the stages will be both comprised of urban and natural areas for multiplayer stages. We saw some of the natural ones before in the previous one, however this confirms that both types will be present and could lead to some interesting team comp and strategy ideas as you'll have to plan now for both natural terrain and urban terrain, whereas before 
we only had to work about the urban for the vast majority of situations. For the story info, this is where we get into some shenanigans. There are many pieces that are revealed here. First and foremost, we see the return of the Squid Sisters, along with Agent 3. In this scene, we see that they are sporting entirely new outfits for the most part, as well as Agent 3 seems to be wearing Cuttlefish's cap. In this rapid-fire sequence of scenes, we also do catch a glimpse of Cuttlefish, who appears to be mostly bald at this point, and distinctly, there is one missing hat, and is much more weathered and aged looking, even than when we saw him in previous games, far more than it would be expected for the time passing between the two, given the appearances of Callie and Mari as well as Agent 3. It is also important to note that the clips of Agent 3 and the Squid Sisters, and the clip revealing Cuttlefish, are not in the same scene and do not appear to be in the same room which raises many questions as to if Cuttlefish isn't with the Squid Sisters in Agent 3, what, what is he doing? Further along, we also see the new variants of the Octotroopers. These Octarians are covered in what is likely bear fur, further alluding to Mr. Grizz being the main antagonist of the game. It should be also noted that the eyes of these Octarians bear an uncanny resemblance to the soapy-looking ink of Santa's Octarians, and are also very different than the eyes of regular ones that we see in Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2. We also get a few incredible glances at some of the scenery of the story modes, including this one of a city that seems to be both going up and going down like stalactites and stalagmites. We also get to see this scene of what appears to be a stage centered around some Japanese floating lanterns. In addition to all this, we then get a glimpse of Octavio in a new mech suit, which seems to be possibly malfunctioning as he spirals in a flip before sliding against a canyon wall. However, it should also be noted the way that he does this also seems like he has more control than being spiraling out of control, which does raise the question of what side is he on in this scenario? as many of the other pieces lead towards Grizzco and Mr. Grizz being the main antagonists of the game, so what role does Octavio fit into all of this? Then, at the end of the sequence, we see what appears to be an arctic facility with a rocket spaceship, all of which then looks to be surrounded by some sort of dome. However, to complicate matters further, the logo on this building is not Grizzco, nor is it Octarian, or rather, it looks to be a blue logo similar to the Kamaboko logo in the Deep Sea Metro. However, upon further looking, it is not identical to it, which could mean this is a fourth entirely different group. We then see a glimpse of what looks to be like a strange mixture of sanitized ink and a fur-like substance that wraps around the new agent when they walk into it. However, notably, it is much more congealed and gelatin-like than traditional ink, which further complicates and adds to the intrigue of what exactly is happening in the story mode. Immediately after this, we are then met with the message, Return of the Mammalians. Also note here, um, throwing this in, bit on a whim because I noticed it, watching that back, putting that in, editor me here. Hello, hi. Um, also, I'd like to point out the fact that if you pay attention during the part where they're talking about the return of the mammalians when that first flashes on the screen, the little bit of music there is the same as when you first enter the Grisco building in Splatoon 2 to start Salmon Run. Just also pointing that out there. Alright, cutting in here again, um, so the structure that we see that is like the Space Needle with the uh, weird maybe Camobo, maybe not Camobo thing, um, is called Alterna, is the name of this location. Uh, which one, excellent name, and two, it definitely is highlighting the fact that this is not the Splatlands and it's completely different entirely. Um, there is also the this information on the ink, which apparently the small fry are immune to it. Uh, yes right here and so this seems to be like it seems to me what they're saying is you get to control both uh little buddy and your regular inkling in this alterna area where you actually also use the little buddy to get through to areas to get rid of the ink 
so that your regular inkling can get through. We also see more on cuttlefish. Um, this is the new name of the stage that we see in the very, very beginning intro bit. And we get a couple more looks at some of this. Oh, and yes, they also confirmed this year, but we knew that. Yeah, so they say a sophisticated transportation network. So we don't know what it is, but we do get confirmation that we will be going back to Inkopolis in some capacity. Which we kind of already guessed from that. Now, to tie everything together, what all does this even mean? Before, when I made the previous deep dive of the Splatoon 3 announcement trailer, I used many of the existing story threads and made a few predictions of what I thought the story might be. As of this, many are correct and incorrect. Uh, the reveal of the new Octarians heavily implies Grisco's involvement as well as the whole title Return of the Mammalians. Although r very different than I initially thought, the sanitization and the effects of Tartar's efforts do seem to also make an appearance in the new Strange Ink and in elements of the Octarians' designs. However, the inclusion of Octavio, including a new rendition of his mech, does change thing of things a bit and leaves more questions revolving the actual Octarian military and society's involvement than answers. Additionally, there is the, the significant twist of Callie and Mari, along with Agent 3, returning to be supporting characters of the story rather than Pearl and Marina. This then raises the question of what exactly are Off the Hook doing in the new games? It is the City of Chaos, you would think that Pearl would have some sort of major involvement here, as previously seen with Callie being directly involved in the Splatoon 2 story mode after the events of the Splatoon 1 Final Fest. However, there's even more that adds to this, because it also brings into question, because we do see Agent 3 as part of this, but notably not as an idol, that is the theory that Agent 3 and Agent 8 are idols still valid? Probably not Agent 3 for part of it. Maybe. However, I think it's much more likely that if, if they are, which I still do think that Agent 8 is one, that it's then more likely to be Agent 4 as the other one, being both of these Splatoon 2 agents together for the all right, editor me here again. Hello. Um, they also released this info on a group called Seaside, which I'm not sure. I have two thoughts on this. Um, this could either be the idol group, but that seems a little bit weird to me that they wouldn't show actual models of them in game. And this seems more like the art that they would release for something like Sash and Mori or the, um, I don't remember the name of the bands, but like one of their their side band things that makes it. So I think this might be the uh, the band that does the essentially the split attack or incoming of the Splatoon three stuff. Because otherwise, why wouldn't they just show the models? But it could also very well be that. So that does very much affect the uh, agents being the new idols for the games theory. Moreover, some of the biggest questions that remain unanswered are, what is the group behind the Polar Rocket? Is it Camabo or someone else? What has happened to Cuttlefish and how does that relate to the bonus track from Octotune? We see him in the trailer, but he is absent in the scenes from Three and the Squid Sisters, and why does Three have his hat? Has he become an antagonist or is he still on your side? If it is the latter, then why isn't he seen in the same scene as the rest? Additionally, we see in the trailer sharp changes in climate between scene to scene. In Splatsville, the scenery is very arid and craggy, but in parts of the story mode, we see the ground is covered in snow and ice and near a body of water. Then, on the stage that is like the Museum di Alfonso, we see a familiar oceanic and semi-tropical climate that we see in Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2. So how then does the player get to all of these locations? Is it the Deep Sea Metro? Is it the plane in the opening of the previous trailer? Or some other method? We will just have to wait to see what happens in Splatoon 3 for some of this, I guess. Um, we also do get to see, very briefly, in some of these snap cuts, we see diagrams of what looks to be the professor's notes on Judd, or some other correlation. Is this the notes for the cloning of Judd and Doolittle Judd? And how does this relate to the main story of the games? Needless to say, though, I am absolutely hyped for this. The trailer they showed us was exactly what I was hoping for and more. Enough to, to make us extremely hype and showcase the world and story, but ultimately leave us with more questions than answers and preserve most of the details and context for the actual game, as to not, like, spoil most of the story in the trailers, 
it's leaving a lot of room for us to think and to wonder about it, and then ultimately discover for ourselves in the game, which I really appreciate. Aside from what we've already talked about, the character customization options look awesome, but the new gear looks absolutely insane, and it looks like they're bringing over loads of content from Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2 to this game. The music showcase as well, as well is absolutely phenomenal. It's just enough different to be distinct and unique from the music of Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2, but still has that same flavoring that is iconic to the Splatoon franchise. With that being said though, that's all I've got for today. Thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed, consider leaving a like, and if you're new, consider subscribing and sticking around for more Splatoon shenanigans. With that being said though, I will see you all in the next one.